Hi everybody, June 7, 2019. Yes, I am going to go through the flooding, uh, take a look at radar. Our jet stream is just being ripped apart. Um, we've been having thunder now since like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. It's 7.39 p.m. Uh, thunderstorms I saw really very bizarre, almost blinding lightning just about 20 minutes ago. Um, oh, a limb from a tree literally just broke off right outside my apartment window. Um, that was when we had no rain, no wind, nothing. Just snapped off. Um, so many things are happening now. But I want to start with this storm tracking could be a casualty of 5G. Really? Well, radar operates in that 5G range. It operates in the millimeter wave, but apparently they're talking about um, a higher megahertz, the 24 megahertz. And radar operates right outside that. So I don't know what to make of this. I really don't. Okay. Uh, did they not know that 5G was going to interrupt uh, their ability to predict weather? Only now they're beginning to recognize this. Something's off with this. Scientists are warning that their precision tracking of hurricanes could be disrupted by signals from the new generation of wireless networks known as 5G that will soon roll out across the United States in one test that mimicked interference Sandy was incorrectly forecast to head out to sea. You know what? I am wondering if because these uh, meteorologists cannot predict weather anymore, uh, any of you experiencing mainstream media meteorologists getting it wrong all the time? Oops, sorry, you only had about two minutes warning for a tornado to hit your town. Oops, sorry. Um, well, we thought it was going to be light rain, but flash flooding occurs. Or, well, thunderstorms predicted for Wednesday, and then you don't get them. Um, look, I'm wondering if they're using 5G to cover up their inability to predict, to forecast weather now. Because... Well, when you're at war, uh, it's kind of like you're not warned when the bombs are going to be dropped. Or is it AI? AI actually controlling our weather. And, well, that artificial intelligence, well, it supersedes human intelligence. The, I don't, I don't, I don't buy it. Something something is not right. But if they can't predict hurricanes with 5G, well, that would mean they would not allow the rollout of 5G because the prediction of hurricanes is really very important, right? This would result in the reduction of hurricane track forecast lead time by roughly two to three days. Sorry. Uh, there's, yeah, not liking this. There's something about this that, well, it's, it's being used to cover up something else. So, yeah, flooding Oklahoma City. It's right in here, and you can see the entire yard in this business is flooded. Uh, so it's going to be a while before this recedes, and this is a problem here for this business. But uh, this is... The, the kind of flooding that we're seeing. Roads giving way, you know, cows stuck, businesses, sorry. Uh, it's endless. endless.
So many farms, guys. So many farms are just getting destroyed on a daily basis. Alabama, are you getting really bad storms? Strong to severe storms invading the west, western parts of central Alabama. And, well, you had tornadoes earlier. Businesses were damaged. Nobody was injured. Um, trees are toppling all over the place, you know. But business owners blame clogged drains for flooding. Clogged drains are all over our country now. Isn't it interesting that we have clogged drains in every state that is flooding streets? On that road there in Chesterfield, they opened back up. So we made our way back to Richmond to check on this road here. This road has cleared up, but earlier it was a different story. In fact, you could have kayaked down this road. It's the soundtrack of the day. Rain pouring across central Virginia, roads turning into rivers, and intersections, well, they're becoming lakes. When I saw this particular lady who's stranded here, it didn't surprise me in the least. Scary moments for one Lyft driver in the Manchester area in South Richmond when she had to be rescued. She didn't want to go on camera, but she told me her engine was flooded out, causing expensive damages. We've seen cars stuck before and we've pulled cars out before. Owner of tanks, trucks, and trailers, Scott McCoy says this is a common thing and the ponding on Friday, well, huh, he says this is nothing. It's more common to be like the gold vehicle in my driveway, like to be up there. You heard him, the water rises so far it reaches the building. But the water rose so far, the first floor of our building got flooded out. All of our paperwork was damaged, destroyed and other things as well. McCoy believes it's all because of clogged drains, the water turning heavy pallets into floats. The pal I'm sorry, you know, rain used to, uh, yeah, drain away. It Now, every state is seeing this. In fact, even South Carolina, yesterday, Now, I am not uh, saying that the rain that, well, at, it must have been, I don't know, five o'clock in the morning. It came down hard, woke me up, thought, you know, it was just going to take the gutter right off the roof. It was pretty intense. So, you know, then during the day I see this in Greenville, Greenville, South Carolina. Um, sorry, you know, the rain amounts, it, it's, this, everything is just not adding up today, okay? Nothing is really making sense. And um, unfortunately, a lot of people are having to suffer the consequences of man creating rain. Cities <clears throat> clearly not doing their job. The drains are clogged everywhere. Uh, and I got a comment, an email from a subscriber who was talking about the New Mexico dams, where he heard one third of the dams in New Mexico, and he just heard this today, one third of the dams in Mexico are in serious need of repair. And then, I don't know, I can't remember the, the details. Hang on. Okay, sorry, I just went back to read it. 30% are um, showing decay and erosion, and one-third of the dams are in serious need of maintenance repairs. So all over the country, our infrastructure has just been decaying. You have been paying taxes for that infrastructure, for the maintenance of it, and nothing seems to have been done. So where has all of that money gone, Americans? 
Where has it gone? I just learned that South Carolina is about to impose a $25, $25 annual fee on top of all of the other fees. If you own a car, $25 per car. Why? Well, because of road maintenance. Not South Carolina. I'm sorry, Anderson County. Okay, so uh, 2017 they passed a an annual increase in fuel tax of two cents per year for three years up to that's in addition to the fuel tax. So why did they pass that tax in South Carolina? Well, for roads, road repair, highways and roads. And then I dig a little bit deeper and I find that Anderson County was included to receive millions of dollars, I think 4.2 million from that uh, increase in the gasoline tax for repair of roads and now they're going to impose $25 an annual fee if you want a car you have to pay $25 but you already pay an excise tax on your car and you already have an awful lot of those fees we're getting so unbelievably ripped off okay Americans, please get out of your schmuckness and recognize what is taking place. It's, uh, and of course now I'm seeing an awful lot of uh, news reports on, oh, all of those potholes. Well, it's, they're caused by all of the rain. My God, the rain that's manufactured by man. Here, uh, Tennessee got really hit hard last night. Your cleanup crews continue to work here in this neighborhood inside and outside home. Torrential rains last night overwhelmed this storm drainage system, flooding homes with as much as three feet of water inside and forcing some neighbors in the subdivision to be evacuated by firefighters. It's almost like you just want to wake up from this bad dream. Instead, this nightmare is a reality for Melissa Salazar and her neighbors in Durman Town's Oakley subdivision. It's just heartbreaking, and I'm just having to go through all my pictures and photo albums that have been ruined, and um, just keepsakes, you know, that, that your kids have made you, and it's all ruined. This afternoon, cleanup crews rolled in fans, tore out carpeting, and took out chairs at Salazar's now soggy home. It was very traumatic and my kids, it was really, it was really traumatic for them. The furniture was floating around and... It's the aftermath of overnight flash flooding, which overwhelmed the storm drainage and poured water inside nearby homes in this Germantown neighborhood. It got up to about three feet. The water just kept coming and coming. Salazar said her family doesn't have flood insurance, meaning the price tag of this cleanup could be expensive and painful. We're talking 5000 to 100000 Anywhere in between. Aside from Germantown in southeast Shelby County, torrential overnight rains left a mess in and around the Windyke area. Downpours flooded cars at this dealership at Hacks Cross in Winchester and at three apartment complexes nearby, including Champion Hills at Windyke. It was like huge rainfall. All of my car was damaged too. Okay, people aren't questioning that. People aren't questioning a flash flood. Okay, you had rain and you had so much rain that you are, you, you were looking at three feet, you were looking at furniture floating in your home, you are looking at the cars that you can't even see. I mean, this is as much of the car that you can see. Something is very wrong. I sure hope that people begin to question what they are experiencing. And the fact that we're experiencing this over and over and over and over again, that in itself should beg questions. Please do research on weather modification, geoengineering. I have a playlist, two playlists. Check out.
the playlist, a lot of information, 215 videos in my, on my weather modification playlist. You can get educated on how they can create this. How they can create this. Yes, your country is being destroyed. Please stop ignoring what is taking place. Uh, a whole lot of people just do not have a big picture of what is taking place. A lot of people in Tennessee don't realize that this has been going on now and I have a playlist US flooding and you can see all of the flash flooding that occurred over and over and over and over again last year doing exactly what you are seeing the flash flooding doing now but on top of this flash flooding you've got the tornadoes and you have flooding the flooding is different from flash flooding the flooding that is occurring in Oklahoma and Arkansas and my god South Dakota in Iowa and Illinois and Missouri and um, um, Nebraska and Kansas and flooding out farms and now you have the flash flooding flooding out areas Baton Rouge once again homes flooded Tennessee all over uh, when are going when are people going to start looking at this and saying to themselves, okay, I've got to dig into this because clearly we're not getting all of the information from our mainstream media reporters on what is happening. Um, it's not climate change. I also have a climate change playlist. Please check it out. whole lot of experts, climatologists, meteorologists, scientists, physicists, really smart people, Nobel laureates, and former IPCC members who have come out and said that the science of the United Nations IPCC and our U.S. National Assessment on Climate, that coming out of the executive office, that coming out of the executive office during Trump years and Trump never switched those Obama scientists. He kept the same scientists that were continually reporting fraudulent science. It's known. Please look into it. Please. The rain is expected to make the already flood-ravaged South even worse this weekend. Flood alerts are in effect across six states this morning. One man was killed by flash flooding in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Maria Villarreal is in Prairieville. That's about 20 miles from Baton Rouge. Maria, it's a good morning for some of us, but there, how bad is the damage? Uh, the, bad, the damage looks... Look at the fungal disease. This tree is saturated with fungal disease. So we have people who are literally blind, the reporter blind, the homeowner blind. Is no one recognizing how weak our trees are? They are weakened. When you see this amount of fungal disease on trees, you have a sick tree and well, when you're sick, you're not very strong. When you're sick, your immune system is compromised. Virtually all trees now are loaded with this fungal disease. They're coming down easy. And yes, uh, it is the, uh, well, frequencies, okay? Scalar technology, Tesla those frequencies that Tesla discovered, scalar technology, microwave frequencies, extremely low frequencies, high frequencies coming out of Doppler radar. They can create, they can create high winds. They can create micro bursts. And well, we know that they can create tornadoes, but a lot of what people are calling tornadoes are not tornadoes. If you really look at that funnel that looks a little funny, a funny funnel 
Um, it looks more like a whirlwind. Yes, I have shown you videos, the patents, how they can create whirlwinds, weather modification by artificial satellites. Satellites, yes, they are. <laughs> I just got a really strong high-pitched uh, jab in my ear. Very high-pitched tone. Anyway, look. Um, it's surreal, you know, that we are living this. So surreal. With people who just, you know, this tree. Look at how sick this tree is. And the destruction just continues. It's pretty bad right now. As you can see, this is what was left behind in the wake of these storms. This tree was actually behind the home. It snapped and ended up on the roof. You can't even see the door anymore, guys. A lot of families tell me they got the tornado warning just minutes before this thing hit. Massive flooding now covers parts of Louisiana after hours of torrential rain. When I saw the, the rubbish and everything go in the air, I said, oh my God. Severe storms slammed Gulf Coast parishes, creating flash flooding and kicking up high winds. Tornadoes ripped through the Baton Rouge area with winds powerful enough to rip trees out of the ground. So the suction just blew the door open, I guess. Cassie Harper barely made it inside. The roof was actually somewhat intact, but the water was pouring through. And we got her bed out of here, and as soon as um, Jeffrey's brother walked out, the entire roof fell. Your daughter could have been in here. Yeah. Harper says she was lucky she took her kids to daycare early. Has it hit you that reality that they could have been home? It has, and it just keeps coming in waves. I have a meltdown and then I'm okay, and then I come in here and I just cry. Intense rainfall and flooding ravaged parts of the region, trapping people in their homes. It's okay, it's okay. And okay. I, you can click on the link below if you've not seen this, but I posted uh, the, uh, end of this video yesterday. You know, guys, uh, we're seeing this now almost on a daily basis. Uh, this woman, you know, you hear, oh, tornado, and you only have two minutes, uh, a two minute warning, or you don't have any warning. Um, reason why I wanted you to see this is because what this woman said is what is happening all over the country. Uh, uh, you have no warning. No warning. So, yes, you need to be prepared for anything at any time. That is, that is what life has become. Another farm. All right. We got a little bit of rain today. A little bit of rain all month, all spring. This is a field that we planted the cotton about five days ago. And this creek is backed up and we are flooded. About 80 acres there that's flooded out. We are flowing pretty good. Just look at all this water. So, uh, the fields can't be worked. But thank you. The massive flooding caught people off guard. So, Local 24 went searching for answers, asking how did it get so bad? Meteorologists with the National Weather Service say a lot of rain fell in a very short amount of time in southeast Shelby and northeast DeSoto counties. The storms hovered instead of moving through the area, causing the high concentration of rainfall. The highest amount we've seen was uh, at Olive Branch, where they had 8.7 inches. Uh, the Collierville area saw more than 6 inches. Germantown saw more than 5 inches. The rain fell so fast, the Nuncana Creek reached a record high. We'll have more on that at 6. Meantime, power outages have gone down tremendously since this morning. At its peak, some 5,700 MLG customers were in the dark. And tonight, the utilities outage map shows 100 homes and businesses do not have power. MLGW has 
not said when all the power will be restored. And I, Brett, thank you. I haven't even been, you know, showing you how many power outages that uh, Americans have been experiencing in states all over the place. You see articles, 50,000 without power. Um, all of this, getting that big picture, you're not going to get it from mainstream media. It's just, you're not going to get it. You know, here, Walker, Walker, Louisiana. Walker, Louisiana. All these towns that nobody focuses on. Uh, flooded. Jesus. Yeah, it's endless. So, checking out radar. Oh, I don't even know what I really do believe. The change has been so significant on radar sites with these blips of um, storms you know, all over and precipitation all over or you see these bands of precipitation and look at our radar now seems to have a different look than the it, it looks like it's uh, I can't think of the word but look at this radar, which seems to have a grid pattern to it. Maybe not. I saw it from a distance, but all of the little frequencies that you're seeing being shot off, emitted, you know, into what is, I guess, little bands of uh, real big, uh, severe storms. The red indicates thunder storms. And here you have storms out of Colorado that Wyoming and Nebraska, it's um, they're catching one another. And then they create the train of thunderstorms, the, the thunderstorm train. You see the microwaves, you see the extremely low frequencies being set off. Um, nobody, hardly anybody seems to even be curious about what's happening with our radar. Oh, because you don't see it on mainstream media? Well, get off mainstream media. But look at our jet stream. Now, you've got, oh, it was more pronounced earlier, but look at these storms coming into South Carolina from Georgia with these frequency shots to them. Um, I'll show you what I captured earlier. Um, okay. These, this, the, this, uh, uh, these blips of storm are heading west and then back into uh, states that <laughs> are already flooded out. We got Arkansas and Oklahoma coming back into from Missouri. Well, earlier, there was a big split right here. So let me bring that video up. All right, this was taken at um, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. you can see a storm that is literally, it looks like it's just being held in place right here in Virginia. Um, very bizarre. Very bizarre. What are these? Okay. 
What are they? They're just being created, erupting out of nowhere? Oh, I guess they're ladybugs or uh, what? Birds and insects captured on radar. No, they're not. Okay. Um, Extremely low frequencies from Galveston, Galveston, and also emitted from Austin. What? What are we viewing here? We're viewing. What is this? The jet stream. It's going east, and then it circles around to come back around. But this seems to be heading east and this it just it breaks off and it starts going in two separate directions something is very wrong here no mainstream media meteorologists they are not going to tell you the truth about what is taking place you still have that extremely low frequency being shot um, Illinois into Iowa crossing the Mississippi River, but this makes it even clearer. Um, I'm on College of DuPage, and something's very wrong. Look at these clouds. You have the clouds going in opposite directions, and these clouds over here don't seem to be moving. They just disappear. They're evaporating, while these clouds are getting bigger right underneath it. Um, these clouds are going up north. All right, something's very wrong. So yeah, they can do an awful lot of damage with electromagnetic frequencies. You can see it very clearly in College of DuPage's satellite, okay? Uh, this is moving, this seems to be moving, but this over here is not moving, it just dissipates, it just evaporates. This here is growing right underneath it. Um, you have this going kind of north, east, but, it, but there's a break here and it's going southwest. This is staying. This band of precipitation up here is not, it just doesn't move while these are moving down to the west, down west, southwest, back down to areas where you've had massive flooding. Uh, this is Ohio. Ohio, am I right? This is Kentucky. This is Tennessee. Um, you can't make sense of this. So they're claiming that 5G is the problem with predicting storms? Are you kidding? No. But look at Virginia up here. And I do zoom in on it. It's not, this isn't moving. It's like a creation of more, oh, could it be flash flooding that they're creating right here? And it looks like the train of thunderstorms coming from Georgia into South Carolina, they're bunching them up. You know, you put a frequency right here and you can stop a weather front. Frequencies are very powerful. I wish people would, oh, just get curious about them. Electromagnetic frequencies. Get curious. Find out what man can do with the technology that man has at his hands today. So, you see, it's not going anywhere. Cut off too soon. They're just this is uh, North Carolina and 
Virginia. It doesn't go anywhere, but you see this straight line, very, it's very clearly defined. A storm? Well, you know, man's hand is in this. So, uh, it's unfortunate that we have, you know, an awful lot of Americans who just don't want to believe that we are at war and they are using weather as a weapon. And as you can see, a nice, a nice shot of microwaves right here, Georgia, into South Carolina, all of these frequencies. But look, it's like looking at, I don't know, jelly beans and then just swirling them about in a big bowl. You know, that's, that's now what we see on radar. This is not what we used to see at all. Not at all. All links are below.